daughter up to fourth graders? Yes, because, I don't know, because I want you guys to rock, man, you know? Because you're fourth graders, yes. You're no longer like in the primary grades. <laughs> hey, hey, whoa, 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 whoa. What is this on our page? Oh, my goodness. Whew, that's frightening. You're scary. <laughs> so, oh, yeah, really? Very cool. It's an Indian cobra. Okay, yeah, what's the big deal? You know, so what? You're a cobra from India. Yeah, I mean, you know, so that's really cool. But, oh, okay, nice to know. Yes, okay, we fear you. Uh -huh. Your venom is so toxic. Well, basically, if you get bit by a cobra, uh, you don't have much of a life left, basically. Unless, of course, you rush to the hospital and get your anti-venom. But hey, fella. Okay, so your name's Indy. Oh my God, like Indiana Jones? Indy, are you serious? Oh my goodness, okay, yeah. All right, that's great, yes, yes, okay, cool. We gotta shrink you now, we're gonna make you super small. See, you're not so scary now, are you? Ah, yeah, look at that, woohoo. Now what do you have to say to yourself, huh? Shrinky, you're so little. <laughs> I don't know, we won't be that mean. Here, well, we'll make you a little bit bigger. There we go. Okay, well, hey, my fourth credits, welcome to another crazy math video with Mr. Wara. I'm so sorry that you have to put up with my very cringy ways here, but this is just who I am. Trying to get focused with our chapter three review test. And of course, this is basically the review for many of you, uh, depending on what assessment your teachers use. I use the actual chapter test that's provided by the teacher. And of course, this review test looks just like it. That's right, so if you really study this, you'll probably be good to go. All right, well, let's go ahead and get started with number one. As it says, explain how to find 40 times 50 using mental math. Well, a lot of ways I suppose you could do that mentally. Um, okay, well, you know, when I think of it, I see it kind of two ways. One way in this particular chapter, they had you kind of thinking, like you could kind of think of 50, for example, it's kind of like five tens, right? And actually 40 is like four tens. But if we took the number 40 and multiplied it by five tens, we'd end up with 200 tens. And see, 200 tens, when you think about it, when we look at place value, is really 2,000, okay? That's what 200 tens are because it's being multiplied by 10. Otherwise, I don't know, for mental math, truthfully, I think the way that I would think of this problem, if I were to solve it mentally, would be just to take your simple facts, the four and the five. Because the four and the five, that's like your simple facts. So you end up with just 20, right? Four times five, ooh, yeah, so just 20. And we have two powers of 10. We have one here and one there. So one power of 10, another power of 10. That's really how I would solve it, but for using mental math. So explain. All right, I'll explain it my way. I would multiply the four and the five because those are my simple facts, right? Then add two zeros for the two powers of 10. Add two zeros, that's a Z, not to be confused with the two. Add two zeros for the two powers of 10. I gave you two ways it, it could have been solved mentally without having to do the old fashioned, you know, 40 times 50, setting your problem up like this. You want to move away from that when you see a problem like that because you're looking at it going, I have four tens and five tens. You know, another way you could think of it is four tens and five tens would be 20 tens. And then you have 20 tens, but you still have powers of 10 there that you would have to have to contend with. So, I mean, there's just a lot of different ways you could solve that. Just one way. Okay, cool. Let's move on. Number two says, Mrs. Trainer's class is taking a field trip to the zoo. The trip will cost $26 for each student. There are 22 students in her class. Part A, round each factor to estimate the total cost of the student's field trip. Okay, seems easy enough. Since the key word here is estimate, we come to estimate again, which you know we think is round. It's, it's a, a number that's close to the number that is provided. Here we have the $26, and here we have the 22 students. I look at the 26 and I think on a number line, 26 is closer to 30 than it is to 20. Therefore, I'm going to kind of round up and say the estimate of the cost, I'm going to say is $30. Now, I'm multiplying this because remember, this is like a fast way to add. 
we could take each student at $30 and add all those, but that would take a really long time. In my videos, usually only about 15 minutes. So I wouldn't have enough time to do that. But 22 is pretty much like 20. Now I look at that. Again, you can look at that as 30 times two tens, okay? And then figure it out that way. I'll show you kind of both ways. So 30 times two tens, in this case, would be rewriting it, writing $30 times, and if you had two tens, we'll put two tens, okay? Which is equal to 60 tens. And since we have 60 tens, we would need to add on one more power of 10. So it's because this is just tens, and 60 tens is actually equal to 600. In this case, $600 with no change. That's one way. Another way, like we just said in our last problem, was just to take it and do our $30. I'm just showing you both ways. Times 20, I would say look for the simple facts. Simple facts is right here. Three times two is six. You have one power of 10 here, so we need to add on. That's the tens, and then you have another tens, another power of 10. See, and that's $600, okay? I know you're thinking, Mr. Warr, I think your way is a little bit easier. Well, 30 times 20, doing it the way I am? Yes. What my way might not show you as well is it might not show you the concept as well when we look at place value. But as long as you can remember that like a zero here on a number is like one more power of 10. They're tens. Three by itself is just a three. But, but when you have 30, you should be thinking, yes, this number is 10 times greater than the three because three times 10, hello, yes, it's 30, okay? So you like my little diagram? Okay, so that's what you should be thinking, all right? Now, some students just memorize, they multiply that, they just add on two zeros and that's fine. The only problem with that is that you may not be understanding what you're actually doing, you know? Anyway. Time for part B. Part B says use compatible numbers to estimate the total cost of the field trip. Okay, when I think of compatible numbers, I think of compatible numbers being numbers that, remember we were talking about earlier in some earlier videos, like six plus four makes a 10, seven plus three makes a 10. These are compatible numbers. Numbers that when you put them together, it might make it easier to figure out mentally. You can maybe do it in your head or clearly make the problem easier. When I look at our two numbers that we had, we had 26 and 22, remember? Each, the trip was, was $26 for each student, and she had 22 students in her class. So when I look at this, and I'm thinking about compatible numbers. Well, 30 and 20 were compatible. It was more of an estimate. But when I think of the two, and I think if we were to use 20, 20 is nice because it's like double. 10, right? It's double 10, but it kind of makes it easier. So if we were to just, let's say, we just were to change that 26 and make it a 25. See, 25 is compatible with 20. And the reason why I say it's compatible because 25, what we could do is we could just double it with a power of 10. Because if I asked you what a quarter was doubled, I'm thinking you could tell me, ah, that's like 50 cents. Well, this is very similar. It's just that we're talking dollars. So what I'm gonna do here, so you can see what I'm doing, I'm gonna go ahead and just put my $25 here, multiply it by two, easy enough, right? And that's going to equal 50, $50. Because if you have $25 and you double it, you have 50. But don't forget I had that power of 10. These were tens, so now I'm just going to put on that power of 10 on there. And what do I get? $500, woo, okay? Those are compatible numbers. So we would say that 25 is like a nice, number that can be used as a compatible number? Definitely two. Two, you should always be thinking times two, doubling something, okay? That's just a very, very fun number to have in math because it makes things, oh, what are you doing over there? Dot, get over here. <laughs> okay, sorry. And so that's really what you should be thinking. Anyway, I kind of got myself distracted. Way to go, Mr. Wara. I know, I do it all the time. Especially when I talk to myself, okay. The part C says, which do you think is the better estimate? Explain. Hmm, that's a good question. I like that question. Well, looking at our numbers, let me go up and take a look. So we had $26 for each student, 22 students in the class. So when we estimated, we actually estimated up on the cost. So we went from $26 to $30, okay? And we rounded down on the number of students. With the compatible numbers, we... Oh, we rounded down on both numbers. We rounded the 25, 22 students. Oh no, yes we did. We rounded the 22 students down to 20 and then the cost also by a dollar. Now that I understand that, which do you think is a better estimate? I'm gonna have to say the better estimate was the one that we used with the uh, $30 times the 20. 
So I would say that the $600 estimate was better. And why do I think it was better? I think it was better because we rounded up on the money. So that would let me know that, well, if I had $600, I would for sure have enough money, right, for this field trip. Because teachers, we have to do this sometimes, right? When we're figuring out a place we want to go and we have to take our number of students and then we want to make sure that we have enough money for the trip. So we would want to round down on the money. Otherwise, we could end up short. We wouldn't have all the money that we need. It's probably better to round up a little bit because then if there was a little bit of money left over, well, that way you could either give the students like a refund or you'd have some money that you could use for the class that the students can use later, you know, like a pizza party. Yeah, a pizza party, you know, and then we had, oh, boys and girls, guess what? We have some extra money and we are going to have a pizza party, right? So that's just an example. So that's my explanation. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down for you. So this is kind of like what I was thinking there. So yeah, I think $600 would be a better estimate because the cost per student was rounded up from $26 to $30. And so this would ensure that it's sufficient, which would mean it's like enough, that enough amount of money would be raised for the field trip. That's just one way. Now, if we were to actually figure this problem out, which would be kind of interesting to see what were the actual numbers. So we had $26 and 22 students. And if we multiply that, through 12, 4, that's 5. And this is not required. I'm just doing this to see. 4, 5. You can see our amount. Yeah, it's going to be $572. This was a 5. <laughs> so, yeah, so it's closer to $600. And I think mostly because we took that 30. See, we rounded up, which was closer. When we rounded that 26 down to 25 and we rounded the students down, that meant that clearly that wouldn't be enough money. Or the number would be off by a larger amount, which is what happened. Okay. Cool. Let's go on the next page. Ah, it's a snake. Yeah, very funny. Ha ha, scary. You really scared me. <laughs> See, look at my heart's only pumping like, what? What, my pulse is 135. Oh, maybe that snake did scare me. Yeah. <laughs> In your dreams, Indy. All right, let me get you out of the way here. Ooh, scary. Yeah. Okay. For numbers 3A through 3E, select yes or no to show if the answer is correct. Okay. Well, 35 times 10 equals 350. All right. Well, we were always looking at this whole simple fact thing. That's what I was kind of showing you. So 35, look at there. You have your simple fact. It's just 35. It's not really a simple fact, but we can see that. Ignoring the zero and then adding the zero. You can see, yeah, that is absolutely correct. Okay. Yeah. It's just, it's like a power of 10. So what number is 10 times greater than 35? 350. Yes. Woohoo. Now. 19 times 20. This is that. This is the ones that I like here. That's that double. I'm gonna ignore the zero for a time being. What's double 19? That's 38. And then we still have that zero to add on. Yeah, 380. I concur. Yes, that's two in a row. Woohoo! 12 times 100. All right, so we have 12. Simple fact: 12 times 1 is 12. Yep. But we add by 100. We have two powers of 10 here, and there's only showing one there. Urgh, don't like that. Urgh. So sorry, you do not get to pass go and collect $200. Now here we have 70 times 100. Okay, seven times one, seven, yeah, cool. Okay, whoa, I have one, two, three, and I have one, two, three. Ooh, I like it. Yes, that would be a yes on that one there. Okay, it's just 100 times greater, and that's like saying two zeros on the end. Okay, now we have 28 times three. Okay, it's a little bit more tricky because now we have 28. Mm. Can't really, can we do three times in our head? Maybe not so much, probably not. But what's interesting here is we have this 21. Hmm, kind of strange. So would 28 times three be equal to 21? No, maybe 210 possibly? Yes, it could. Okay, I'm gonna just have to quickly do my math here on this one here. And I have 24, carry the two, that's six. And then that's eight, 84. Hmm, plus a power of 10? No, I'm not liking that. I'm not buying that one. Sorry, you can go to find somebody else with that one. So I say, no way. No way, Jose. Okay, number four says, there are 23 boxes of pencils in Mr. Shaw's supply cabinet. Okay, 
23 boxes, okay, of pencils. Got it. Each box contains 100 pencils. Okay, got it. How many pencils are in the supply cabinet? Whew. Now you look at that and you go, oh yeah, 23 boxes times 100 in each box. Now some of you may try to set this up and multiply. No, 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 no. This is where mental math is great because we have two powers of 10 here of 100. So what number is 100 times greater than 23, okay? Well, 230 is 10 times greater. And then of course, 2300 would be 100 times greater. Yeah, 2300. I don't know, was it just me or did that seem super easy? Okay, number five says, which would provide a reasonable estimate for each product? Write the estimate beside the product. An estimate may be used more than once. Ah, I see. So we have these three tiles here. Obviously, we have four problems, so we'd have to use one more than once. So let's see. If we look at 23 times 38, well, when I look at 23, I kind of think of 20, and then 38 like 40. However, I also see a 25 times 40. Those are some nice compatible numbers. So I would definitely say that, you know what, 25 times 40 would give you a reasonable estimate for that particular problem. 46 times 18. You could do 45 times 20, but that's not a choice up there. We could do 50 times 20. Ah, we have that one up there. 50 times 20, I'll take that one. Okay, that's gonna give you a high estimate. How do I know? Well, it's gonna be high. Remember when we were learning about that? Look at the 46 went up. Yeah, went up to 50. And then the 18 went up to 20. See, so both numbers went higher. So that estimate's gonna be a high estimate. 31 times 32, 30 and 30. Yeah, there it is, 30 times 30. Yeah, because both numbers could be rounded, estimated to 30, okay? And then over here we have 39 times 21. Ah, we have a 40 up there. Could we round 21 to 25? Sure could. 39 wouldn't round all the way up to 50, so I wouldn't use that one. So I would say 25 times 40, or, you know, reverse, you would 40, right? Times 25, same thing because of the commutative property. We'd still get the same answer. And those are my final answers. Let's look at number six. There are 26 baseball teams in the league. Each team has 18 players. Write a number sentence. Ooh, they're still using number sentence? Ooh, I like the word equation. It should be coming soon to a theater near you. Just kidding. No, an equation is just a better word to describe what that is. But I understand that in fourth grade, they still call it a number sentence. Just seems a little babyish. Yes, it does. It seems just a little bit too babyish. You should be used to use the word equation. Anywho, Mr. War, can you get us back on track? I can surely try. So write a number sentence that will provide a reasonable estimate for the number of players in the league. Explain how you found your estimate. Well, what I would do for an estimate, I would estimate, I think, 20 players because 18 is almost 20. And if there's 26 baseball teams, well... I see compatible numbers here. So I would actually just multiply that by 25. See, these are compatible numbers because 25, we had this problem before, is 25 double, which is 50, right? Plus one power of 10, right? And it's not gonna be plus 10, it's gonna be a plus a power of 10. So we should actually say times 10, which is equal to 500. I'll show you again what I'm talking about. I'll just explain how you found your estimate. Okay, that's what I need to write in there too. Okay, because 25 double is 50, and then times 10 is 500. That's how I got that. All right, so I guess I would say, explain how you found your estimate. Well, I used numbers that were easy to multiply. That's my explanation. Yeah, that's what you do to find the estimate. Okay, the model shows 48 times 37. Write the partial products. Super easy, because we're just multiplying partial products. So we're just gonna take 30 times 40, probably the maybe the more difficult one. Simple facts tells me four times three is 12. I have two powers of 10, so I'll just add that in there and I get 1,200, so easy. Now I take the 30 and I'm gonna be multiplying that with the eight way over here, because they share that common area right here. 30 going across, eight going down. Simple facts is 24, one power of 10 with my 30. Now I have seven times 40. Well, again, 28 simple facts. Oop, don't like my eight there. Fix it, there we go, kind of sloppy, I know. And then over here we have eight times seven, totally simple fact, 56. And that's it, wow, so easy. Woohoo! yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness, that's another video, woo! Down the drain.
drain. Uh, if that sounds so bad to say that it's down the drain, Mr. Wara, I don't know. Hey, we've got video number two coming up, chapter three review. There'll be a second video to this chapter and then a third video. Until we see you next time, live long.